Hi, hello, welcome and welcome back to yet another episode on your favorite Little Sla YouTube channel. Today we are going to see about how to do the correlation and how to deal with the dynamic data using K6. So I have got uh, recently few requests on uh, posting for more videos on K6. So today and I'm planning to uh, at least post one video for every week on K6 performance testing because K6 is picking up now and there are a lot of people who started to work on K6 and I believe this video will be definitely beneficial to you and in case if you have any doubts please do comment in the comment section we'll have a quick catch up on that and even you can email me to wasanttc at the gmail.com if you have any queries so firstly uh, uh, this part this video which I'm going to discuss about today is the correlation so we all know correlation is a common technique in performance testing and in load testing scenarios correlation means we all know it extracts one or more values from the response of one request and then reusing them in the subsequent requests yes so we get it from the previous request and then uh, uh, sorry previous response and then uh, post it in the subsequent request so this could be getting a token or a J session ID or whatever or any sort of ID which is necessary to fulfill a sequence of steps in a user journey and mostly these values the session ID values will help you to keep the session alive or to pass some token so most of those values are like will be inside the system and we want to pass it to the subsequent request to keep the session alive or to pass some data so our video uh, in this session so we are going to capture sessions uh, such data so it can be any data like capturing a CSR of tokens or view states etc and this type of data is unlikely to be valid when you run your test which means you will need to handle the extraction of this data from the HTML or from a form which will be included in the subsequent request and this issue is fairly common with any website or any application that has forms and can be handled with a little bit of scripting so that's what we're going to do now in this video so before we move on uh, to see uh, how are we going to do this I will show you why are we going to do or like what uh, what are we going to do so we're going to check the validation I'm going to validate few values from this response so when I give this request here I want to find whether I have this validations this wake up to wonderful widgets and uh, all so I want to find whether these values are present in this response and that's that's the main priority or the objective of going to create this script so now let's go back to the script so I have created the scripts already here and uh, let me explain line by line to you so that you can understand it easily so the first part which we all know which is importing HTTP from K6 HTTP this will import the HTTP module from the K6 standard library and this module will provide functions for making any HTTP request so in case this part is a HTTP uh, request so we are going to create add this library are we going to import this so that we can provide functions for making HTTP requests and the second line which is the import of check from K6 will import the check function because we are going to check some values we are going to check the functions from the standard library and this function is used to perform checks on the responses yes so we are going to get response and in that response we are going to perform the checks and then we are adding another function which is export default function so this defines the default function exported by this script and this function represents the behavior of a virtual user during a test so this is a function which will actually represent the behavior or it is going to emulate the virtual user during the load test and then we are going to make a HTTP request so I am storing that in a variable which is RES and as I have showed you uh, previously this is the page which we are going to request so this will send an HTTP get requests so that is what we are mentioning here so it is going to be HTTP and get request so this will send an HTTP get request to the specified URL so here is the URL and we'll assign the response to the variable rest as I have mentioned now and then the next part which is constant slide one with res from that's the response dot json dot slideshow dot slides off so this will 
parse the JSON response body using the dot JSON method and then extracts the first slide from the slideshow dot slides array. So here if you see we have the slideshow dot slides array. Let me just keep it this side. And slide show dot slides array. So this assumes that the response body is structured as JSON with a slideshow obtaining con ob object containing a slides array. So if you see here we have a slides, then we have array. So this is the array one and then the array two. So now when we move on to the check slide one, so this will check the extracted slide object against certain criteria because it ensures that the title of the first slide. So we're going to check the title. So here if you see, we're going to check the title. So the S dot title should be, if you see here, the title of this value should be wake up to wonder widgets and that's what we have here and then the S dot type. So if you see here, we have the type as all so and that is in the title the slide one title so we're going to validate this slide one title and then the slide type so now we are going to uh, run this file so this actually this script all these 13 line 13 or 14 lines so this script essentially makes an http request to a specified url that's to the http bin.test k6.io to extract data from the json response perform checks on the extracted data and reports if there are any failures in the checks and it simulates the behavior of a virtual user interact with the tiger system so let's now run this and see how does it work so since i have the script ready here let me run it so to run the script we have to use k6 space run correlation.js the test has executed successfully with one virtual user and if you see here the slide one has correct title and slide one has correct type so now let me go back here and if i make any changes so for example like instead of wake up two winter widgets i'm just making wake up winter widgets and if we run this script again we can see slide one has no correct title that's like failed like the one assertion that's been failed so we have like zero zero uh, as the response like it's been failed so that's why we're getting it so on the other way if you go to the top here if you can see you can see like 100 percent checks has been uh, done and there are like two um, correct responses and there is like zero errors but if you see here we can see one is valid one of the checks is valid and the second check is invalid so this is how you can extract the value from the response so as i've showed you here so we are extracting the value or the response the data from the response and we're using it so let's now see another example now yep so now we'll move on to the part two of this video where we are going to extract the hidden value say for example you in in other uh, scripts such as new load or uh, using jmeter where we can extract the hidden element and the interesting part here is this k6 which we are going to use now will be extracting the dynamic data and i will show you how so currently we have a script here so let me explain what does this script do like we did for the first script so um, as usual we have the uh, http import where this will import the http module from k6 which provides functions for making http requests and then the second part is import sleep since we are adding a sleep command which is a kind of a thing time or a delay which we use in other tools and then we have the export function the export default function so this function will define the default function exported by the script and this function represents a single virtual user's behavior during a load test and moving on to the next part which is the http request part so we are making a http get request to the specified url here and we are setting the response type to text so if you remember we have previously a json request we haven't mentioned the uh, response type but here we are mentioning the response type as text the response is saved in the response of the res variable and then we have the constant element 
where we have the code of res.html which is the response.html.find so we are trying to find the hidden value which is the redir r e d i r value from the response so this is actually hidden value which is a kind of a uh, a dynamic value which we normally get from the application and then we have the get the value of the attribute value and we are saving it in the uh, val as the variable and finally we are printing the value so we can see what exactly have we extracted so this is a very simple script but i will take it to the next level uh, after uh, executing this one so uh, it's correlation underscore two dot js so i'm going here k6 run correlation underscore two dot js so this will run the script and here you can see the value of the hidden field redar which we are extracted is this one so let me show you the application so here if you see this here is the application of the of the sorry this here is the application and when i view the resource the source code here you can see the re, uh, redar the redar value and its value is one so now we will extract the csrf token which is basically a dynamic value so here if you note down it starts with ndm so now i'm going to write the code i'm going to expand the code so i'm going to add constant csr constant token and it's going to be same one the response of the html i'm going to find the value which is going to be input so let me just copy it from here so that i don't make any mistakes and then i'll copy the name from here which is going to be csr of token so i have extracted the value and now moving on to the next line so i'm going to create a value a token where i'm going to save the value dot attribute And it's going to be the value underscore token so we have extracted the value and then i'm going to paste this value here so i've extracted okay let me change okay i think i'm right now i have to change this value here this is going to be token dot attribute And this val is what you're going to give here and then the element and okay so this is going to be the value so we want the value yep if I'm not wrong we are going to get the value so value is the same uh, argument so I'm, going, I'm not going to make any change here so this is going to be just the value and then the val token so we have got extra the right value here so let me just copy this one and I'll paste it here and it's going to be val underscore token let me save it and I believe this should work fine uh, uh, uh. it's constant value token dot okay it this is going to be element yep I'm not making making any changes here this is going to be just okay i have made a small mistake here i haven't closed this value i think now it should work fine yep so now it has got executed fine but still we have not got the right value because it's taking from a different hidden field so we have to change the hidden field now Yep, it's because you are referring this value, but it should be token dot attribute. And let me save it. Let's run it again. Yep. So here we have got the values of these one. So the redirect value is one, and then the uh, the value for the CSRF token is 
there's this one so every time when we run or when we hit this one uh, hit this request so here you can see it's like m lowercase j and capital i and here if you see it's m t k so as i have told you earlier so this actually gets the dynamic data from your response and then we can pass it on to the request so we will use this effectively so we will see how to use this value and we will pass it to the next uh, request in our next video so until then it's bye bye from us and until slow